Good evening, evening everyone and good well, afternoon. Good afternoon wherever you are in the world. Uh, uh, welcome everyone. We're going to begin with the word of prayer. Oh Lord Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening thankful for life, thankful for the blessings. We pray that you'll be with Pastor Anthony Jackson as he brings the word to us. Pray for the presence of the Holy Spirit to lead, teach and guide. And we pray for those who will hasten their footsteps who are coming to join. Be with and bless us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, welcome. We're going to begin with a song called, Oh, What a Saviour.
Amen. What a saviour. Where would we be without Jesus? There's only one that can save us, and that is Christ. Amen. Well, we'd like to welcome everyone again, and especially Pastor Jackson is from Las Vegas. He's no stranger to this platform. We're looking forward to the messages. Welcome. The time is yours. I'd like to say uh, to God be the glory. We thank God for uh, the blessings that he has bestowed upon us. Uh, we're so thankful to be able to be here on the platform once again. It is, uh, it's been a busy, uh, sort of busy month for me. And we just got through with the camp meeting in the state of Washington, or, or Idaho, should I say. And uh, we've been uh, doing radio, uh, live stream, uh, camp meetings, and now we're in the UK. Now, we're not complaining. We're thankful that God would even consider me for such a work. And uh, I, 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 I take that very seriously. And so we are going to ask the Lord to do something marvelous as we uh, continue uh, in the work that he's called us to do. Now, what I am going to do is I'm going to uh, be covering a subject matter that's going to cover much of, of our week. It's going to be a subject matter. Uh, the subject matter is going to be spread it out over a series of different messages. But it will be based on uh, events that have taken place through uh, the time frame and time zone of things. And so we're just going to ask the Lord to bless us that we might be able to uh, be a part of something that I believe that he desires to be taking place. So I know that we're running just a little behind this uh, evening uh, there in the UK. We'll be quick with our first presentation for you uh, so that you'll be back again on tomorrow evening uh, that uh, uh, we want to wear out the, the patience of the saints. I would that you would be so kind to pray with me as we invite the presence of the Holy Spirit to be with us. And we want to welcome those by way of our Rev Media TV. Uh, we are Grateful that you are now tuned in with us as well. You and I are going to be uh, talking to our brothers and sisters there in the UK. I would now that you would prepare for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the many blessings that it, we have been stored, been blessed to have. We're grateful for how you continue to uh, bless in ways that we had not even considered how we could be blessed. But I do know that one of the greatest blessings that you've ever given mankind, I'm going to say the greatest blessing, is you gave us your son, Father. You gave us Jesus Christ to be with mankind forever. He will always be with us. He'll be our God. And we'll be his people. So we invite the presence of the Holy Spirit to teach us from on high. Teach us about Jesus. We ask, Father, that Special blessings will be upon our brothers and sisters there in the UK and around the countries, uh, different portions of country, the countries where they may be represented. And we ask, Father, that whatsoever is done, it would be done for the glory of God. 
that we would understand is by your mighty hand that we're kept. So please, Lord, please bless us with your presence. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior of our lives. Amen, Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, you and I are going to uh, just briefly talk a little bit our subject matter is going to talk about the table of the Lord, the table of the Lord. And in the table of the Lord, brothers and sisters, we're going to discuss uh, the, uh, the time frame of the call of God to the, to, to, to the banquet table. And each time frame will deal with different segments of time. And we're going to ask God to bless in a mighty way as we open up and let you see that the call to the supper table or to the marriage of the Lamb has been going on since the fall of mankind. So let's take a look as we begin a weak campaign. The Bible says this as we look. First of all, we want to put in, and I know I've got two R's, so I said uh, two P R R prior <laughs> period, uh, a breakfast period from the fall of Adam, and we're going to say B C to A D 27. So this long period of time, we're going to call it the breakfast period. Is that all right? The Bible tells us this in the book of Genesis chapter 3. In the book of Genesis chapter 3, notice what the Bible tells us here. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. The promise of the coming king has, was made back during when mankind failed fail in the process of disobeying God. So during this breakfast period, we're going to look at what's on the table. What's on the table? What's on this breakfast table? I want to remind you that the Exodus, and we're going to pick up around the Exodus. We know that that, that there was a, the fall of man, and when the fall of man took place, there were many things that took place in between. Uh, from, from the slaying of, of Cain, Cain slaying Abel, uh, to the point of Abraham coming into play, uh, uh, being the father of many nations, uh, to uh, the point of, of, of uh, Joseph, and uh, or should I say uh, Jacob, uh, becoming uh, one that would bear the 12 tribes of Israel and, and, and so on. So we know these things are on the table. So one of the main things, one of the main subjects that's on the table, I want you to get this. One of the main subjects that is on the table is going to be the subject of, of the fact that uh, God gave his commandments. God gave his royal law. And during the time of giving his royal law, so the commandments of God was given during the breakfast hour. And we find that in the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. And we see that in Exodus chapter 20, we see the call or the giving of the royal law. Now the Bible says, and the Bible says, and God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So we find that God gives his royal law, he places it on the breakfast table. Now I want you to get, get this again. We're going to, if you we're going to show you the period of time, the church, as one would say, the period of time of uh, what is, is there 
on the breakfast menu. There are three basic uh, 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 eating periods. One is breakfast. The other, we call it dinner. Some call it lunch. And the other call it supper. And some people call supper hour dinner hour. But brothers and sisters, when we talk about biblical time, we're going to look at breakfast, sup, uh, dinner, uh, breakfast, uh, dinner, and supper. So we recognize that that God gave His royal law. He reinstituted once again His royal law uh, here when the children of Israel are brought up out of the land of Egypt. Uh, and and here the Bible says he spake all these words, thou shalt have no other gods before me. We find that thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou know thy son, thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested on the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and he hallowed it. Then the Bible says this, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. No his manservant, no his maidservant, no his, his ox, no his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Then the Bible says that there was thundering and lightning and trumpet sounding. Brothers and sisters, you'll find that when thundering and lightning and trumpet sounding tells us that judgment uh, a, a period of judgment is also on the breakfast table. Now, one of the things that we're going to take a look at, brothers and sisters, is the fact that on the breakfast table, that the law of God will remain for breakfast, dinner, and supper. That God is going to highlight uh, the, 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 there are going to be highlights of certain things that cause the children of Israel to veer away from God, but will remain on each menu or each time period for the breakfast hour, the uh, dinner hour, and the supper hour. Uh, we're going to take a look also as we go forth that judgment is also magnified in the breakfast hour, in the dinner hour, and the supper hour. But most of all, we're going to find that in every dispensation of time, mankind rejects the one true God. He resists the calling of God to walk in righteousness. Notice as we now go back to the screen. In the book, of, uh, we said that around 1441 was the Exodus. The Bible says in the book of Exodus 16, 15, notice what the Bible says here. And when the children of Israel saw it, that they said one to another, it is manna. For they was not what it was. And Moses said unto them, this is the bread which the Lord have given you to eat. You're going to find that there is a health message. Listen to me very carefully, brothers and sisters. That there is a health message that is also going to be on the breakfast table, that's going to be on the dinner table, and that's going to be on the supper table. Some may say, well, these are 
uh, principles or doctrines uh, that that should be obeyed, but we'll find that 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 they will not be obeyed, and we 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 take and we begin to take a look at it in the first beginning. But I want you to get this: this bread is a rejection of 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 of, of angels' food, of, of 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 food that would have would cause the body to be to be strengthened, uh, to cause the nourishment, the nourishment of heaven was in this bread. But they rejected it and decided they wanted to go back to the flesh pots of Egypt. They rejected the call of better health. I want you to get this. They rejected the call to better health. But as we go down this table and this final table of time, you're going to see that this call, this gospel call, brothers and sisters, is going to be rejected time and time again. So notice here as we go a little further. So they said they knew not what it was, but the Bible said, this is the bread which the Lord have given you to eat. Notice what it says in 1622 of Exodus. Bible says this. The Bible says, and it came to pass that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for one man, and all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. Notice what takes place. On the sixth day, God reinstituted uh, I'll bring back to man's attention that preparation day must be had because the seventh day is sacred in all of his, his dwelling. Then the Bible says in Exodus 16, 23, and he said unto them, this is that which the Lord has said. Listen very carefully now. This is that which the Lord has said. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Break that bake that which ye will bake today, and seed it that which that ye will seed, seed it, and that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. So he says, listen, uh, you're going to get what you're going to get a double portion on the sixth day. Why? Because the seventh day in all of his dwelling is a holy day. It is a holy day. Brothers and sisters, many may say this. Listen very carefully now. Many may think and says, well, wait a minute, preacher. There are, uh, we are obeying and keeping the Sabbath. Brothers and sisters, many of us are walking and stepping all over the sacred hours of the Sabbath. I'm finding out in my travels that uh, there are some that believe it's okay to still uh, go to restaurants on the Sabbath. Uh, that they are, are still doing work uh, on the Sabbath uh, or still making excuses. God understands that I have to feed the family. And so therefore, little do they know, they are preparing themselves to receive a mark in their hands. Brothers and sisters, We'll talk about that as we get further down in our study week. But we're finding that this thing is being brought on the on the breakfast table. This, this is not something that God highlights later on uh, during the dispensation of time, but he does it early and often when we find that the what we would call, I call it the, the ancient scripts, as one would say, the Old Testament. I, I, I find that all of the word of God, we must study. Because if we don't study all the word of God, we will continue to make the same mistakes over and over and over again. So I want you to get that. So we find here in the script, that he says, listen, you need to get everything you're going to get on get a double portion on the sixth day, because why? 
The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord our God. It is holy in all of its dwelling. Notice now the breakfast gospel call. We're going to talk about this breakfast gospel call feast. Matthew 22, 3 tells us this. And sent forth this service to call them that were bidden to the wedding. They would not come. I want you to get that. Now, for those that might have just joined us in, in whatever setting that you may come in, we are literally breaking down the, uh, the time frame of time, dealing from the Old to the New Testament. We're going we're gonna to break it down to the breakfast time, the dinner time, and the supper time. This is important, brothers and sisters, because in every situation, we're going to highlight something that we cannot ignore because when we get down to the supper call, this highlight of events that continue to be trampled upon will be the test for all mankind. So the Bible says that he sent forth this service to call them that were bidden. Listen very carefully now. To the wedding, and they would not come. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 51. Notice what the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah. In Jeremiah chapter 51, let's look at verse 5. The Bible says in Jeremiah 51, 5, For Israel have not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God, of the Lord of hosts. Though their land was filled, get this now, filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Flee out of the midst of Babylon. This is the cry. And deliver every man his soul. So there's a cry to flee out of Babylon even in the breakfast hour. There is a cry, brothers and sisters, to let us know that God doesn't forsake us. It is us that leads him. And the cry of God constantly trying to get man's attention, trying to get man to see that his love is an everlasting love, but it cannot listen very carefully, be trampled upon and take it as a weakness. So we find that the cry is not the fact that God forsakes us, but that we forsake him in our homes, our, our our businesses, or whatever it want to, wherever we are, is filled with sin. When I say our businesses, I'm talking about if you are a business owner. I'm talking about you that 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 is supposed to be leaders in your home. If our children seeing us breaking God's law, then how can we be true witnesses for them? So the Bible says that, he says, though Israel's land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel, yet he still gives the cry, flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul, be not cut off in her iniquity. For this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. Brothers and sisters, what did that sound like? That sounds like the very text that we're reading in the book of Revelation. Now, I'm going to turn to Revelation in my, in my Bible, and I'm going to be reading uh, some of the things that, that, that we're going to be seeing on this screen. I didn't put it on the screen for right now because uh, it's going to be brought on the screen for a little later time. But notice what it says. Uh, I'm going to read here. I'm going to read here in, 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 in Revelation chapter 17. Notice what the Bible says in Revelation chapter 17. In fact, let's go even further. Let's go back. Let's go to Revelation chapter 14. The Bible says this beginning at verse 6. And I saw another, an another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell upon the earth. To every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth to see in the fountains of waters. Then the Bible says in verse 8, And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made 
All nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Listen very carefully, brothers and sisters. Listen very carefully. I want you to get this, that we are finding that even in the midst of Revelation chapter 17, notice what the Bible says in Revelation chapter 17. And the Bible says this, beginning at verse 1, and there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, and whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Brothers and sisters, same type of language. Notice what he says in verse 4 and 5 of Revelation 17, and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stone and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of the abominations or infirmities of her fornication, and upon her forehead the name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and an abomination of the earth. And I saw that the woman, the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great adoration. The Bible tells us quickly now that we are to flee. That we are to flee. Then the Bible tells us this. I want you to get this. So the Bible tells us to flee out of the midst of Babylon. Then the Bible says, come out of her, my people. Notice what the Bible says. Listen very carefully now. As we read once again, I'm going to read here in, in, in verse uh, number, uh, let's go back to verse uh, chapter 14. Let's go back to uh, chapter 14. Notice what he says. The Bible says in verse 9, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture in the cup of his indignation, and shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the angels and in the presence of the Lamb. The Bible declares, brothers and sisters, there is a call to come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sin, that you be not partakers of her plagues. So we see that even on the breakfast table, early in the dispensation of time, we call it the breakfast hour. Why? Because in the Old Testament, there is still a cry, flee out of the midst of Babylon. Warning comes even in the breakfast hour, deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. Notice what else the Bible says in verse 7. Babylon have been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are Babylon. Notice what he says. Therefore, the nations are are, are, are mad, it should have said. Let me go and pick it up right here in Jeremiah 51. I think I left one word off of there. And it says, Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Howl for her. Take balm for her pain. If so, she, she may be healed. And the deadly wound was healed. Brothers and sisters, the language that we are seeing here in Jeremiah is repeated. The same language is repeated of spiritual Babylon we find in Revelation. Notice, brothers and sisters, as we look a little further. In fact, I want to double check something real quickly before I go in and, and move forward. I'm going to the book of Jeremiah. I just want to make sure I left a word off. And so I want to make sure that uh, I was correct when I said that that word, one of those words should be mad. Let me see here, Re Re uh, Jeremiah 51, 8. And that's when we let me look at that and make sure I think I might have did not put it over. Yes. In, ver in verse 7, where he says that that vengeance are rendered unto my recompense. Babylon have made the golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken and the nations have drunken her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. Brothers and sisters. 
here in Jeremiah, we see warning about Babylon. And I want you to know that though Jeremiah them were in a physical captivity of Babylon, this is spiritual Babylon by which this is being spoken of. And the warning comes also during the breakfast hour. Early, God warns us about the events that must be, that we must take heed of. Why? Because this will be the final warning, the everlasting gospel to be given, brothers and sisters. The final warning to be given, brothers and sisters, is now the first, second, and third angel's message. The Bible says, watch this now. The Bible says that 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 so that she may be healed. The Bible says that her womb was healed. We find that in the book of Revelation, chapter 13. Notice what the Bible says in the book of Revelation, chapter 13. Let me put uh, uh, Jeremiah 51 8 back on the screen for you. And then we're going to read out of Jeremiah. I use the authorized King James Version Bible. Notice what the Bible says in the book of uh, Revelation, chapter 13. Notice what the Bible says here. The Bible says in Revelation, chapter 13, the Bible says this. And I'm going to pick up around verse number. In fact, let's let's just pick up. Let's just pick up here in in verse three. And I saw that he is as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered. Listen very carefully now. All the world wondered after the beast. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. Listen to me very carefully now. The enemy is busy, and he's going to do everything he can to get us distracted with the events of today or the world's activity that we will not keep our minds on what God has given us to do in the final days of earth history, that we may warn the world of the impending judgments, that we may warn the world of what is coming. So God found it important that the warnings would begin to be put on, I call it the breakfast tables, early here in the Old Testament that echoes and tell us what is coming down the pipeline for supper. Listen very carefully now. Notice what it says here. As we look again, Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Howl for her, take balm for her pain. If so be, she may be healed. We went over and referenced it to Revelation chapter 13 and verse 3. And I saw uh, one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the days, talking about Babylon, spiritual Babylon. Listen very carefully now. The Bible says this in verse 9 of Jeremiah 51, and look at verse 9. He would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Why? Because she doesn't change. Forsake her. Let us go everyone into his own country, for her judgment reaches unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her plagues. Brothers and sisters, this cry, she is the deadly wound. See, it looks as if she might have changed. But she does not change, brothers and sisters. She will not change. And only, only when Christ shall bring her to her knees will she be one that would declare that surely, surely her sins have caused many to be brought low. Brothers and sisters, so when we read in Revelation, when we begin to read here in, in Jeremiah 51, we're, it's like we're reading in Revelation, same language. When we begin to read the events in Revelation, this is supper time events. That means these are the final events that happened just before the close of human probation. That these events will affect Brothers and sisters will affect 
every man, woman, boy, and girl, that we would have to make a decision on whether we would walk in obedience. Now, remember, we said during the breakfast hour that the, 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 the royal law is on the breakfast table. Listen very carefully now. There is a cry to come out of her, my people, even during the time of Jeremiah. Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, for her sins have reached unto heaven. Notice what he says as we continue to, to, to look and cross-reference this. Notice what he says. The Lord has brought forth our righteousness. Come and let us declare in Zion the whip of the Lord our God. The Lord has brought forth our righteousness. Christ is our righteousness. Listen very carefully now. Christ is our righteousness. Come and declare it in Zion. Come and declare it in the church. This is the work of the Lord, brothers and sisters. Many people are leaving the platform of, 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 of the truth to go and to, because the error, because the platform of error seems to be more popular. So therefore they're leaving the platform of truth that they might be accepted, that their churches may be full. Brothers and sisters, it is better to have just one member in the church and truth reign in that one member in the church than to have a, a, a church filled with hundreds of thousands and no one have the naked truth. Listen very carefully now as we go just a little bit further. Notice here in Jeremiah, I want you to know that we, we, we meant to make that a little bigger, but I'm hoping you can read it. In Jeremiah 17, 20, and say unto them, Hear ye the word of the Lord, ye kings of Judah, and all Judah, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, that enter in by these gates. That needed to be bigger. You know why? Because, brothers and sisters, this cry is a cry of what is highlighted that will be highlighted in every dispensation of time. So it'll be highlighted in the breakfast hour. It'll be highlighted in the, in the dinner hour. And it will truly be highlighted in the supper hour. Notice what it says here in Jeremiah 17, 21. Thus said the Lord, take heed to yourselves to bear no burden on the Sabbath day, nor bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem, Neither carry forth a burden out of your houses on the Sabbath day. Neither do ye any work, but hollow, oh, brothers and sisters, for it is hollow in all of its dwelling because God hollowed it, and he did it during the time of creation week. And hollow ye the Sabbath day as I commanded your fathers, says the Lord. Hollow that day. Listen very carefully, brothers and sisters, because many people are leaving the platform of truth and people are taking and leaving that which God says keep holy, that we are to reverence that day. But because the, the first day of the week is more popular, I've seen pastors leave the platform. I've seen saints leave the platform. Why? Because they says, you know something, I just can't believe that all of those people are wrong and we have it right. Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, I give you Bible. Bible. It's not about what people say. It's about what the word of the Lord says. And the Lord says, even in the, in the early dispensation of time, God highlights it again. He highlights it when they come out of Jerusalem, uh, when they came out of the, on the Exodus. He, he highlighted during the time of creation, we, six days he labored, but he blessed the seventh day. He sanctified it and he hollowed it, brothers and sisters. Then he brings us down through the time frame and see how that they continue to now trample over that day of worship. So therefore, when he brings them out 
of uh, of of of, of uh, slavery, uh, the Exodus, he now reestablishes it again. That the law of God is going to be has to be kept, brothers and sisters. The law of God is binding, no matter what dispensation of time we're in. And our highlight is put on the fourth commandment. But wait a minute. Let's go back to the screen. Notice what else that takes place. Verse 23. But they obey not. Neither inclined their ear. But made their neck stiff. That they might not hear. Nor receive instructions see brothers and sisters when the call of the gospel table come the bible says that they made light of it and they got to the point where uh they they were they they were too busy uh, they got to the point that they would not hear the call to the gospel table they would not hear it but then god got to the point brothers and sisters to show us, to allow us to see how disobedient man is and how this simple command, how this simple command to show reverence and worship to the one true God, how man re refused to do it. Notice what takes place, brothers and sisters. Notice what takes place. Jeremiah 17, 24, 17, 24. Notice what takes place. And it came and, and it shall come to pass if ye diligently hearken unto me, says the Lord, to bring in no burden through the gates of this city on the Sabbath day, but hollow the Sabbath day and do no work therein. Then shall there enter into the gates of this city things and princes, setting upon the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses, they and their princes, the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and this city shall remain forever. But the Bible says they would not hear it. They became a stiff-necked people, and they would not obey they would not obey, brothers and sisters. I want you to see that this becomes something that happens in the on the breakfast table. They push that menu back. And they push the law of God back. They begin to push uh, the, the menus that God introduces to his people that they are to have. They push them back. And it says, that's not for me. I don't want that. Help diet. I don't want that. I, I would rather have the flesh pots of Egypt. Uh, we, they push back the fact that God says, listen, I need you to reverence. I need you to hollow my Sabbath. Why? Because this is a memorial of creation. It tells you who I am. But we say, no. They become a stiff-necked people when the call, when the call at the at the feast at the wedding table, the call comes that my fatlings are, are, are ready. It's still a rejection, brothers and sisters. They refuse to put on the wedding garment. They refuse to do those things in which God has commanded. They refuse, and still today, when we get now to the supper hour, they are still refusing to walk in obedience to the one true God. So what is the utensils that one would use when eating from the breakfast table of the Lord? There's only one utensil needing. Obedience. We're eating the breakfast menu with the utensil of obedience. Brothers and sisters, he says, if you would just be simplified, if you just 
Just hum on the Sabbath. Don't, don't, don't bear any burdens on the Sabbath. Don't, don't go in and out shopping and selling on the Sabbath. Honor it. He says, what I'll do, if you would do that, I will cause kings and princes, I will cause them to go in and out of these gates. I will cause Jerusalem to be a place where kings and princes would go out. I will cause this city to stand forever, but they would not. They did not want to eat that breakfast menu. Now I'm going to real quickly do one more thing before we call it and bring you back tomorrow as we continue to eat from the table of the Lord. Notice what takes place. The Bible tells us this in Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 22. The Bible says, for as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship Come to worship before me, says the Lord. So, brothers and sisters, this menu of obedience, of paying reverence, obeying the one true God, hallowing that day of rest, which is a memorial of his power, a memorial of creation, a memorial of his love, a memorial of his great gifts that he gives to mankind. It is a memorial, brothers and sisters, and we will not worship him, but those that accept these and, and walk in this in the obedience of the Lord, these are they will be a part of all flesh coming before him from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath of another. Well, when does this take place? And the earth made new, brothers and sisters. These are they that sat down at the supper table. Probation closes. Listen very carefully now. So listen. The Sabbath has been an issue for mankind. Even in the early dispensation of God's people, rejecting, refusing to hollow the beauty of that day. The devil well knows that if he can get the people to see it, if God can arrest our attention and we could all, all mankind come and sit down at the feet of Jesus, it will honor the one true God as the God of all creation. And the devil don't want that. He wants to keep us confused. So he used popularity. He uses error. And he gets famous or, or sometimes catchy hook sayings well, I can worship on any day. I can keep any day. I will honor God on any day. But you find it a problem to honor him on the day that he has commanded to be honored on? There's something wrong with that, brothers and sisters. There is something wrong with that. Why is it that a simple day is so tough that man would dishonor the savior of the world by walking in disobedience to his command. So it says that this is going to take place in the earth made new. All flesh is going to come and worship the point. Last text for today. Notice what he says here. In verse 24 of Isaiah 66. Notice what he says, brothers and sisters. And they shall go forth to look upon the caucuses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worms shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched. And they shall be abhorring 
unto all flesh. They will be take, taken into outer darkness, cast into outer darkness where there should be weeping and gnashing of teeth. They will be taken and they will become ashes under the feet of the saints. The wicked will become ashes under the seat, under the feet of, of the saints. So my question is, as we look at the supper table of the Lord, there are two menus that's going to be on the supper table that we will highlight in every dispensation of time. And that is God's law. And highlighted in God's law will be his memorial that declares that he is the God of all creation. Brothers and sisters, this week on this platform, you and I are going to be taking a look very close at the table of the Lord. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for your mercy and your love. We are grateful, Father, for how you loved us beyond anything that we could ourselves imagine. But you have loved us. You have cared us, even though, even though uh, we have we got sin, we have been rebelling against you. You still has had great love and mercy for mankind. And you're crying out, you're, you're calling us to the supper table of the Lord. You're calling us to the table of the Lord. You, you said you're, the feast is ready, their fatlings are killed. Go, call all that will come. And if we just simply take what is written in Ecclesiastes, We are to keep the commandments of God. For this is the whole duty of man. If we could recognize that you have given us a love that if we would just embrace to love the Lord our God with all of our hearts and might. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And to love our neighbor as thyself. Lord, on these two hangs all the law and the prophets. The entire Bible hangs on our love for God and our love for our neighbor. What a mighty God you are. What a mighty, mighty, mighty God you are. Bless us with understanding this week as we break bread in the UK. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen, Lord. Amen. We turn it back over now to the Dutch. Amen. We'd like to thank Pastor Jackson for that timely message. I was just thinking that I can't I can't find an incident in the Bible where the majority were in the right. No, I can't think of one either. And, um, it's, you know, there's been so much controversy about the Sabbath. It's just, it's a simple request that God makes that we keep the Sabbath, fourth commandment. But the people just don't seem to see the importance of it. Most of them think it was now to the cross. Yeah. And, um... It's very important, you know, the commandments that they given from day one. Um, you know, because Adam and Eve knew the commandment before, before um, uh, there was a given in, in uh, on Mount Sinai, and and it just said, "Remember the Sabbath." So it's got to be before for you to, for you to remember it then. So we're certainly looking forward to this this week's meetings, and uh, thank you for the message. We're going to end with a song called Sabbath Rest. It only had one verse. Uh, I, I don't know who wrote the song, but we, we, we um, uh, added a second verse to it. It's a beautiful song.
Sister Metal, are you in a position to pray for us, please, to close? Yes, sure. I was just struggling to <laughs> open the mic. Let's pray. To our Father in heaven this evening, Lord, we just want to say thank you for this message that you have uh, brought to us through your son, our dear pastor, Jackson. We want to thank you, Father, for reminding us as we journey on, Father, that we ought to stand on the platform of truth and to be obedient to the word as we have written it. How so often, Father, we tremble upon the Sabbath and when we are convinced by the enemy that we are able to observe the Sabbath holy, but uh, you have highlighted, Father, the areas that we we fail. And the fact that you have spoken this evening, Father, you indeed have spoken to each and every one of us who heard this message this evening. And so you are concerned, my Father, about how we handle the day that you set apart, the day that you sanctified, the day that you made holy. And we tremble uh, and miss a step on this holy day. Father, help us to go back to the Bible and to read and to, to be able, Father, to to follow your word as you have written it. And Father, we seek for power, we seek for wisdom, and help us, Father, to resist when the enemy is leading us into breaking the Sabbath day, that, Lord, we shall be able to continue to stand firm even though the heavens fall. So, Father, as we have heard this message, Lord, help us that we can also share the same message with others far and near. And that when you shall come, Lord, and say it is finished, help us that we shall all be able to stand on the right side of the great controversy when we have become victorious. We thank you. Uh, disperse us now, Father, but help us that we will not depart from your presence even though we are going to be in our different places. We bless Pastor and his family, that you protect him and shield him. Father, we know that as he delivered this message, the enemy's wrath is angry, Father, as he has ever been, that when he hears the message being spoken, he makes a target. But Lord, I pray, Father, that you surround his home with the army of heaven. And all of us, Lord God, surround us, Father, and be with us again tomorrow, uh, according to your will, that you gather us again to hear more about what you want us to hear about the, this uh, beautiful menu from the breakfast to the supper that we shall be all welcomed when we get to heaven. Forgive us, Lord, of our sins, because here we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for the prayer, Sister Metron. And yeah. thank you for the Amen. message here. Yeah. We've certainly Pastor blessed. Jackson. We've certainly been blessed. We look forward to tomorrow night. We do. At uh, 4.45, it will be morning prayer. And at 5.30, it will be Desire of Ages. 12 o'clock, midday prayer band. 6 o'clock, 6.30, song service. And then followed by another time, the message by Pastor Anthony Jackson. So have a nice evening, everyone, and see you all later by God's grace. Thank you. Take care all. Sleep well.